Okay, so everyone, you all see this is a mixer, right? Um, so um, you right now we have like basically four cables attached to it. Two of them are inputs and two of them are outputs. The outputs basically go out to our speakers, our left and right speakers, okay? Then as for our inputs, right, because what we are doing is we are taking audio from a audio interface which has stereo outputs. So stereo uh, means you need two channels. So that's why you see these two here. Left, these are supposed to be left and right, okay? Yeah, because two channels. It, yeah, so um, that's um, the, the way a mixer works, just in basic terms. When you plug uh, something into here, or maybe here if you use the XLR for this three pin one, um, everything that you plug in here is controlled by each column, okay? So um, I'll go through the controls. So, but just uh, basically speaking, when you plug into here, this one is controlled by everything here, and this one is controlled by everything here. Okay, so now what do all these knobs do? Uh, okay, so um, very basically speaking, this, the, all the way at the bottom, let's start from the bottom. Should I start from top or bottom? The top? Oh, okay, top, sorry. Okay, you see the top here? Mm -hmm. So what this is, oh, oh, sorry. What this is, is a, is basically a gain control, okay? It controls the amount of signal going into the channel, okay? So this is how much signal is put in. So generally, right, when you first set up, right, especially for these kinds of, uh, it's called line level signals because they're coming from audio interface. Generally, this, you should set them all the way to the bottom first, then you slowly turn up as you need. This um, controls the amount of signal that's being driven into the mixer. Okay, so uh, then after that, we go down here. Okay, so actually aux uh, auxiliary, it's, I don't think it's very important for what we're doing. Right? It's we're not, not because you're not sending to any. Yeah, effects, okay, so yeah. Uh, do I need to explain? Okay. No need, uh, yeah. Okay, we can skip over this, but essentially it's for sending out to external effects boxes, but we are not using external effects, so we can skip over. Okay, so what you see here, you see this low and high, what do you think that implies? What is this? Low time mm -hmm. Yeah, it's an EQ. Okay, so this is a two, it's a, <laughs> it's a two band EQ. So uh, this one controls low frequencies, uh, and then this controls high frequencies. And generally, their default position should be set to uh, zero, okay? Zero means like there's no boost, there's, there's no gain, there's no reduction. It's just flat, okay? But then when you boost like that, uh, then like this would add bass to the signal and this would add uh, high-end treble to it, okay? Uh, this one is a pretty simple mixer, so there's no mid-range control, but uh, yeah, there you go. Okay, now this one is important, okay? Because we're dealing with a stereo pad. What do you see here? Pen, right? So this like Ableton Live like that. When you pen left, it's gonna go left and pen right, it's gonna go right in the summing, in the main outs, okay? So, um, then we come to the bottom. Okay, what we see here is, it also says gain lah, uh, but this is the signal that is going out of the channel because this was coming in and it flows down, it's like a waterfall. It flows down all the way and comes to here. Then this is the, you control the final volume going out to the <coughs> mix. Okay, so this is how you control the individual channels. On a bigger mixer, this is usually not a knob. You, this might be a fader, like a, or a slider. Okay, okay. Um, for this one, for uh, for like bigger format mixers, you might see this as a fader. That is a slider kind of style. But this one is a small mixer, so it's as a knob. It does the same thing. Okay, yeah. So this one, right? You see the U here. Okay, U is basically the same as zero dB, or like it's also known as Unity zero point zero. So it's like the the like it's the absolute, it's like kind of the reference point after which signals would start clipping lah. But of course, it also depends on how much signal you're sending in. But this is generally how you just control the volume. Okay, so this is uh, where it's important. Um, because uh, should I explain the master first or the? You want to explain the difference between this one coming mm. in and this one coming in. Which one do we use? Because when you are when you are first plugging in, both of these should be at the fairest minimum. Mm, okay. It means all the way to the yeah. all the way to the left. Okay, so um the difference between this, right? This is basically input gain, like I explained just now. So it's the amount of signal going in. But even at its absolute bottom position, right, you are still going to get signal in. This is basically like uh, an attenuator or uh, ampli uh, amplifier, okay? So it just you can boost or you can boost the signal if you need it to be boosted. Okay, because this is especially uh, useful for um, microphones as well. Right? Usually line level is usually quite, the signal is usually quite uh, strong to begin with, so don't need to boost as much. But this is if you need to give it a little bit more strength going in, okay? depending on the volume. And then let's talk about this one now. So this is actually the final volume going out after it has been processed by all these 
uh, by the EQ and the pen, okay? And uh, I guess the ox as well. Okay, uh, actually not really the ox, but yeah. Uh, after it's been processed by the EQ and the pen, this is the post um, fader uh, volume, okay? So after it's processed, then the final volume that goes out to the main master, okay? So this is what you will adjust if you want to really if you want to adjust the volume. And this one, right, if you turn it all the way down to, you see this infinity logo there? Infinity <coughs> logo is negative infinity, which means, uh, negative infinity basically means no sum, no volume, okay? Okay, because uh, dB is measured in terms of 0, 0.0, then you go negative, negative, until in negative infinity is nothing, okay? Yeah, so same for the other channel, they are both the same. Okay, so now, um, let's just talk about the master. A bit okay. Master is basically the sum of everything, so it's like a door like that. Is your the the last the, the thing that groups all the channels together? You turn it up and down, your overall volume of all the channels will go up and down uh, together. Okay, so it's pretty simple. Phones is basically a, a separate control for headphones if you plug in headphones to monitor, which might be useful on that day. I don't know if you'll do it, but yeah, so this one will send whatever makes you to the headphones but there's a separate control because sometimes the headphones if you lock the thing to the same channel it might be too loud for the headphones but okay for the speakers or too soft for the speakers but okay for the headphones so that's why there's two controls okay all right now let's go back to the channel there's one important thing because we are dealing with a stereo pair because stereo means left and right but um in its default state because this is an analog mixer right the there's no difference between a left signal and a right signal they are both just electro electrical signals traveling through the cable. So what you need to do is to manually specify which one is left and which one is right. Because um, right now it's already kind of panned already, but in its default position, this is what you might encounter on the day. All the pans might be set to the middle. What happens when you have this, right, is that you will get all the signals played in mono because the mixer doesn't know which one to send to left and which one to send to right, okay? <coughs> Yeah, especially if you use these channels. These channels, they will actually, the mixer will actually know. You know how to differentiate. But for these channels, it doesn't know which is left and right. So what's the solution to that? Can you can tell me? Turn one to right, turn one to left. Yes, okay. Jin is right. Okay, so for the left channel, pan it all the way to the left, like that. Absolute extreme. And this one, pan all the way to the right. Then this way, uh, the mixer will know to send it to the left and send it to the right. Okay, on the main master. And then it will go out via the main outs here into the speakers, okay? <coughs> yeah, so that is essentially it for how to set up uh, these um, types of uh, cables and all that. Um, if you all see the top one here, maybe one more thing to explain. You see this mic and all that? This is basically called XLR input, okay? So uh, try to get the terms uh, down in your head. For this kind of input, like the stereo cable or that kind of guitar plug, they are known as uh, TRS or TS, tip ring sleeve, okay? So because, uh, can, can I, I can unplug, right? Like, wait, 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 before you unplug yeah. and un or plug in anything, everything, make yeah. sure that your... Make sure everything is down, and even if you want to be even safer, make sure your speakers are off, okay? So what I'm going to do is just going to unplug, okay? So this is called a TRS cable, okay? Yeah, it's a TRS cable um, because TRS stands for tip, ring and sleeve so if you see here this is a tip then in the middle here there's this band here it's a ring that's the ring because it's like a ring that goes on then this is a sleeve it goes all the way down okay um if you have a mono cable right usually you only see one line right and that's called ts because there's no ring because it's one segment rather than two this this part here is segmented that's why it's called tip ring sleeve uh yeah so this is called a TRS cable, or people can call it stereo cable or balance cable, but uh, TRS is the technical term for this uh, cable, okay? So this goes into always these line inputs, as you have already learned just now. Uh, the different one up here, right? You see this one with three? It's a mic input, um, and this one accepts XLR cables. XLR is basically uh, the cables for, uh, Sean's gonna get a XLR cable to show, okay? you can see right it looks like a kind of like the, the wow emoji right got the three dots so you look at this cable this is an xlr cable so it correspondingly has one two three so this is meant for microphones or uh, equipment that uses xlr outputs which are most likely going to be a microphone in our case okay that yeah so in this case right uh, rather than plugging it into the big one you will plug it into the top one here okay it's so just going to plug it in here 
okay might be a bit okay so that's how it goes in okay then this side will be plugged into whatever microphone that you're using okay yeah okay I, I, yeah, I don't really have to show that but yeah that's how you it works okay um, generally you shouldn't share the channel then you can't put two in one no you can't you can't right, you will spoil it won't, it won't or it wouldn't even work yeah yeah okay so um, generally this is how you set up you have line level signals or like, uh, like for these kind of things because this is usually meant for this kind of TRS uh, usually used with audio interfaces or synthesizers like keyboard synthesizers uh, or your computer you have like the stereo output like that, that kind you usually go to that um, they are also used for guitars but that's a different thing like we are not going to use guitars in the ML at least not for now are you okay 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 yeah yeah so if you are using a microphone, then you will have to turn this up. Mm -hmm. okay? okay? Yeah, you use a microphone, then you turn it up. But if you are using your mm. laptop or audio interface, keep it at the minimum. Mm. Okay. And adjust volume from the bottom. Yeah. So um, one effect of the gain knob or the trim, it's called trim here, but it's also known as gain. Uh, the input gain knob for microphones is that uh, it controls the amount of signal going in. And by virtue of that, it also controls the range of the microphone in a sense. So if you set the trim to very low, your microphone will only pick up sounds that are just in its immediate vicinity. So like within 10 cm of it, like that. Depends on the microphone, huh? but if you turn it up, your microphone will start picking up stuff from uh, around, or rather you'll start to hear stuff from around the room and all that because the signal is amplified to the point where it can be uh, sent through, it's strong enough to be sent through the channel and out into the main outs. So that's what you're going to hear, okay? But uh, generally, this one, keep it conservative first, as with everything on a mixer. Keep it low first. Low, then you slowly bring up to high. Because especially for microphones, you can get feedback. Anyone can tell me what feedback is? No, no the thing that killed Dr. Strange, the goodness. The really? feed, okay, feedback is when the sound from the speaker goes into the microphone and just amplifies over and over and over again. Yeah, okay, so it's basically an infinite loop. Because if, let's say you have a microphone here, we turn the gain out all the way, just sum it all the way up. Okay, then you talk into it, your voice comes out of the speaker, then out of the speaker, that sound goes back into the microphone, and then out of the speaker, and the microphone, out of the speaker, infinite loop. That's what causes that ee sound. Okay, it's just a feedback loop. So to reduce that, we have to turn the gain all the way down, and then just slowly bring it up, rather than just cranking it all the way up. Because that's just asking for feedback. Okay, uh, because if you turn the trim to just the right amount, you will get the right amount of amplification on the signal from the microphone, but it won't cause feedback because the, the it's just far enough out of the speaker's range. Okay, yeah, but we have to be careful with it because it depends on the room as well. Because different rooms have different resonances, different echo. Sometimes if the room is enclosed, the signal might bounce off the wall and might be easier to induce feedback. So we really have to set this carefully. Okay, yeah, okay, that's about it. Okay, thank you. So. I, as a matter of practice, uh, when you go into the venue, as I said, because nobody takes care of this mixer, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all of these settings may be all over the place, you know? Yeah. So go in as a practice, turn this all to minimum. Turn your input all to minimum. Your aux doesn't really matter if there's no external <coughs> effects. All your EQ turn to the center because you don't know what the last guy did. Yeah. The last guy may have turned it all over. Leaf booster. Yeah, sound terrible. And then your pants, you go and set them according to where your left and right is. Mm, okay. And make sure that your all of these are at the minimum before you plug anything in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, your master, you may not, the venue may not let you play with the master. They may have a, some venues, they'll put a black tape there touch. or something. Yeah. Do not touch the master control because there's a maximum limit of the speakers. So just know that that might be the case. They may only let you touch this. They may only let you touch the individual. Okay, thanks, Iram. Okay, thank you.